can I just ask one quick question about, again, Alaska LNG and the fact that the reference case does include a completion of the Alaska LNG project, which, of course, I fully support, Alaskans fully support. But in terms of, of the economics that, um, that derive from that project coming out of Alaska, can you speak briefly to that? Uh, sure. We, we have um, LNG from Alaska coming in around the year 2025. Uh, it seems like a long ways away, but 10 years is not a lot and when you're developing a project of the size and scope associated with, with, uh, with that. Uh, it's uh, dependent on our uh, reference case forecast for oil hitting $75 a year, uh, $75 a barrel next year, and then moving up. Uh, over time, higher oil prices make uh, LNG uh, uh, more attractive in overseas markets where uh, fuels tend to get priced uh, against each other, where there's oil-linked contracts for gas. So the uh, higher oil prices would help that. Um, we, uh, two other cases that we ran, Senator, we don't have Alaska LNG coming in. One of those is the low oil price case. Uh, as I said, low, oil, low global oil prices just make it harder for the economics to work for Alaskan LNG. And the other one, it's an, interestingly, is is a high oil and gas resource case. If there are more oil and gas resources, let's say in the lower 48 states relative to Alaska, then Alaska's kind of uh, standing in the queue of projects that would get done on an economic basis might slip down. So there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, the, the reference case, though, does have uh, uh, LNG from Alaska coming in, and it, it would. I think most of it would probably go to Asia, but uh, I, I think some of that actually might end up in Hawaii as well. As I've told Senator Hirono, it's Hawaii is on the way to Asia, so we can make that, <laughs> we can make that work.